Like if you don't have a connection and a relationship to the land, and then how can you expect people to care? When it comes to things like climate change, here in BC, the summer comes around and everyone's really anxious and nervous about the wildfires or this fall with the flooding or all around the world with the temperatures that are changing and food systems falling apart. And it's really overwhelming. Close to home, there was some flooding happening here in Abbotsford. That's not too far. And some of our students were even impacted and their extended families. So it's definitely starting to weave more. And I think it's what was before a, a story that you would hear on the news, it's starting to become closer and closer. So students are able to connect more to it and that's in turn increasing their anxiety. Spending time in nature is a really powerful way to deal with eco-anxiety for two major reasons. Spending time in nature makes us healthier. So it improves our resilience. It makes us more physically and mentally healthier. And that means that we have more reserves to deal with the different health problems that climate change is going to throw our way. When you start to build that relationship with nature, then you can really know what it takes to take care of the land and you'll want to because you'll really have a deeper appreciation for it. It actively inspires you to want to take action on climate. There is research showing that people who are more connected to nature are more likely and not only to want to protect it, because it totally makes sense that we want to protect what we love, but they also engage in more pro-environmental behaviors. So they tend to recycle more. Um, they tend to conserve more electricity. They tend to vote for politicians who are more climate friendly to preserve the planet and preserve these landscapes and these waterways that they love. When I look at a child rouler in the gas, when I look at children militants and militants, their disagreements with the decisions of the big decisions and the decisions that take the power and the money, it fills me with hope. Climate change is not something that we can avoid. It's something that we can deal with. Climate change is Park Prescriptions or PARX, it's powered by the BC Parks Foundation and it's Canada's first national nature prescription initiative. And we launched in November, 2020, and we're working on spreading out across the country right now. Any licensed healthcare professional, whether it's a doctor or a nurse or a physiotherapist or whomever, can actually sign up to prescribe nature through our program. And we have a standard recommendation that patients spend at least two hours each week in nature and at least 20 minutes each time for the maximum health benefits. Quand on parle de santé mentale, c'est facile de parler de maladies et de troubles et de choses qui sont difficiles, de souffrances, de médicaments, de dépression, des choses comme ça. Alors que pour moi, la santé mentale, c'est comme la santé physique finalement aussi, où c'est quelque chose d'assez positif. We like to say in our program that we want nature considered the fourth pillar of health. So just as important as healthy diet, as adequate sleep, and enough exercise at, main at maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Every time one of my colleagues counts as a patient on those three things, which are very routine and very common, I want them to add nature time in as an evidence-based intervention to improve our health. Quand on va parler de santé physique, par exemple, on ne va pas entendre euh, fracture du bras, euh, foulure de cheville, euh, maux de tête. Quand on va parler de santé physique, ça va être à faire du sport, à se sentir bien. Donc pour moi, là, quand je parle de la santé mentale, c'est la même chose aussi. Que... Donc c'est pas une approche où je vais dire les problèmes, mais c'est plus genre, on va parler de bien-être, comment on peut se sentir bien, avoir une vie qui est accomplie, qui est remplie. Je trouve que c'est plus, euh, plus parlant, puis ça fait moins peur. When I'm in the city, I feel overwhelmed. Quite often, there's a lot of noises that are kind of always ongoing um, that's in the background. So I do feel quite overwhelmed by a lot of the noise, a lot of the transportation, people talking, people walking, light as well. So when I go take a trip to the city, it's 
always bright at night there so you can't see the stars um, and I have a lot of trouble going to sleep. There are two major theories as to why nature is so good for our brains. The first theory is called attention restoration theory. And essentially when we spend time in busy urban indoor or outdoor environments, there are lots of hard edges, there are lots of lights and noise and crowds. And what that requires our brains to do is constantly focus and direct our attention to navigate around these obstacles. And our brains don't like that. They're not used to that. And so that makes us fatigued. It makes us irritable and, and um, just unhappy, essentially. A lot of young people I work with live in cities. So coming out to a place where the land is still really pristine and, and clean and not as developed as it is in the city, to be in a place where it's calm and quiet. When you spend time in nature, it's this source of soft fascination. So it's interesting, but it doesn't require us to constantly direct our attention. And so it replenishes those powers of attention and reduces your fatigue and irritability. You can hear the frogs and you can hear the birds and you can be close to the water. It, I just, I see a transformation happen every single time. So how can that not be good for your mental health, you know? Yeah. It's, it's part of, of uh, being human that, that going out into the woods is, is quite satisfying. It's something that many of us are missing. We just don't know we're missing it. I think a lot of us have this intuitive sense that nature is really good for us. A lot of us feel calm and more collected and refreshed when we go outside. I've never been a very spiritual or religious person, but certainly there is a, a natural relaxation that I think um, you're able to achieve when you're in the forest. Whether you're on your own or with other people, um, I just find that I breathe better. My heart rate drops. It's, it's very relaxing. The second theory as to why nature is so good for our brains is called uh, stress reduction theory. So when we experience a stressful event, the theory goes that spending time in nature helps us recover and rebound faster from that stressful event. And this goes back to the way our brains evolved in nature. So if you think about it, um, when early humans spent time in biodiverse environments, they had everything that they needed to survive. So they had sources of food and water um, and shelter. And so these brains kind of became hardwired to want to spend time in these environments that reduce their overall stress and improve their survival. So that's why many, many generations down the line now, we're really hardwired to want to spend more time in green space. We are not independent of nature as much as it might feel that way in an urban environment.